welcome back to Five Cheap Games. I'm appearing on camera before this episode because I want to tell you about the episode and uh, maybe even introduce a guest that's going to be at the very end. Uh, today's episode is going to be about the Steam Deck. Uh, beautiful little device. It's a nice day today, so I'm sitting outside on my front porch playing the Steam Deck. I'm playing Helldivers 2, a game that, you know, AAA game, PS5 game, I can play it on a handheld outdoors. That's pretty sick. A lot of people have Steam Decks now, so I thought doing a Five Cheap Games episode would be a good idea. Now, for Five Cheap Games, uh, the rules are usually that the games have to be under $20, and I'm sticking to that rule today. So, a AAA game like Helldivers 2, which is amazing by the way, does not qualify for the list. Um, it has to be a cheap game under $20, and sales do not count. I think it's cheating if I include sales, even though I do want to mention that Steam, along with other websites like uh, Fanatical and Humble Bundle, always put games on sale for dirt cheap. I'm talking dirt cheap. I'm talking like I got all of the Odd World games for a dollar yesterday. Pretty ridiculous. But $20 base price on the Steam store, that is what I'm going with. Also, this thing's capable of pretty good emulation, and some of these games that I'm going to be talking about, they're available other places either through emulation or on other consoles. So, yes, you can play them cheaper ways, more or less, but if you just got a stock Steam Deck, you're buying games off the Steam store and nothing's on sale, these are the cheap games that you can grab. Five of them. I'm going to do four of them. And then my buddy Justin from The Legend of Leo is going to do the last one. That's right, I got a special guest on this episode, and he has a pick that I don't actually know what it is yet at the time of recording this intro. So let's hope it's good, right? Oh, and just a side note before I go, um, all the footage you're going to be seeing, I don't know about Justin's, but all my footage you're going to be seeing is going to be captured from my gaming laptop. But all the games in this video do work on the Steam Deck. It's just, it's easier to capture it off, off of a computer than it is on this thing. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I want to play some more Helldivers too. First up here, I'm going to be showing off a game that I only got into in the past few months. Um, when I got the Steam Deck back in December, I actually picked up this game uh, because it looked really cool and I had heard about it before. This is Pizza Tower. Pizza Tower is, quite frankly, one of the most unhinged games I've ever played. It is a love letter to the Wario series, more specifically Wario Land 4 for the Game Boy Advance. But just, you know, there's similarities to the Wario games overall. Pizza Tower sees you play as a pizza chef. I think his name's Pepperino or something, I forget. But your goal in each level is to, well for one, you're ascending the Pizza Tower. And in each stage, you are finding the ingredients to your pizza and uh, you get to the end of the stage, you set off an alarm, and then you get out of the stage as quickly as possible. There are uh, other mechanics that come into play later on, uh, but quite frankly, I think this game is... The, the, the appeal of this game is how fucking crazy it is on each level, how different they make the game on each level. Some of the mechanics they introduce are just, again, unhinged. Just some of the stuff they thought of is crazy. And... I, I don't want to show that to you, so I'm just showing you the really early game, basically the, the first level here, and um, this game is worth uh, checking out 
and playing on your own. It's got fantastic music. It's got fantastic, like, hand-drawn looking presentation. Some of the funniest damn animations I've ever seen. Really tight and fluid controls if you like uh, 2D platformers. If you're a fan of speedrunning, this is definitely a game for you. Pizza Tower is just a phenomenal game. Plays well in the Steam Deck, too. Like I said, when I picked up my Steam Deck, this is one of the first games that I had to grab because uh, I hadn't played it yet, but I had heard about it, and the hype is real. Pizza Tower is awesome. From the twisted mind of Suda51 comes Killer7. You may have heard of this game before. It was a game that was on the GameCube and then got ported over to the PlayStation 2. Um, and it kind of stayed there for a long time until recently it got a release on Steam. They didn't bring this to console, sadly. It's only been on Steam. But it's still a great place to play it and it's awesome to have this on the Steam Deck. Killer7 is a very hard game to describe because um, it is one of Suda's more interesting titles. Uh, it takes a more narrative approach as opposed to some of his later games, which are more like action focused. Um, I would say if, if I had to pitch this game, I would say take uh, Resident Evil, take a rail shooter and take uh, like Reservoir Dogs and Put them in a blender. That's sort of what you're getting here. You play as different members of the Smith Syndicate, and your goal is to take out these creatures called the Heaven Smile. Each level will see you traversing an area on rails. Uh, that means you hold A to move forward, you hold B to move backwards, and you pull up your gun to shoot the enemies. They are hidden throughout the stages. But on these rails, you have branching paths. So you can't move freely in the areas, but you can sort of guide where you need to go. And while you're traversing the areas, you have to solve puzzles and talk to characters um, to figure out what you need to do and where you need to go. Switching different characters to different members of the Smith Syndicate is necessary for solving, for solving some of the puzzles. Uh, it's a very stylish game. The story is maybe a little hard to grasp at points, but it's very cool. Um, and it's just overall like a really, really awesome game. And uh, the fact that they brought it out on steam with this remaster is perfect and it plays perfectly on the steam deck We have Suzy Cube. I actually got this game for free. I was buying a bundle on, a, I think it was fanatical.com, and they gave away some free Steam keys, and Suzy Cube was one of them. So here I am with Suzy Cube. Uh, what is it? Suzy Cube is basically. Have you ever played Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS? That's basically what Suzy Cube is. It's sort of like an a indie take on that formula. Which works really well, to be honest, because that formula is simplistic and fun. And that's what Suzy Cube attempts to be. Simplistic and fun. You play as Suzy Cube, she's a cute little cloud person thing. The All the money in your kingdom has been stolen and you're out to save the day. That's all you need to know about the game. Get the platforming. Each stage is set up 
as a platforming obstacle challenge. You start at one end, you go to the other end. And uh, you jump on enemies, you, you collect coins, and you, you dodge uh, g gaps in the ground. You, know, you, you don't fall off the stage. But the um, appeal and challenge of the game is collecting the th uh, three hidden stars in each stage. That's where the game actually becomes pretty challenging later on. Um, but it's still an easily approachable game if you're just looking for a game that you can simply jump and run through. Um, it's not a game that requires too much skill to really play, but it is a lot of fun. Suitsy Cube is a cute little game that uh, works well on the Steam Deck. It's nice to have this handheld. I think this one's a really good one to, to pop out if you're just trying to waste some time or... If you're like watching TV or something, Suzy Cube is a great little game to play. You don't have to focus on it too much. Uh, it's really, it's really cool. Suzy Cube. And lastly, for me, I have a game here that uh, really, really blew me away. This is Dusk. Now, I just want to say up front that Dusk is a game you're going to need to configure for your Steam Deck. It's out of the box. It, it runs perfectly, but the controls need a little bit of configuration. But if you sit down and, and really give it a try, you could figure it out. And after that, you're in for one of the greatest first person shooter experiences you've ever played. Dusk is a, what they call a boomer shooter, which is a, a newer shooter in the style of an older shooter, but it is based in horror. So it's basically a horror first person shooter. It has a very simple looking graphical style reminiscent of older 64-bit games for like the I think of like the N64 when I see it uh, but with that said it still manages to be fast fluid fun scary tense and just an overall awesome game uh, waking up being taken into this creepy town area fighting these cultists um, just trying to escape each stage it's it's a blast uh you you feel like a, a badass through a lot of these stages i mean what what other first person shooter lets you dual wield shotguns like hell yes that is that's the sign of a good ass game right there uh dusk is definitely worth your time um it is also on switch but uh yeah it's fantastic and i would highly recommend dusk if you are a first person shooter fan and you especially like the old school shooters like Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake. This is this should be right up your alley. And now I'm going to hand it over to the Legend of Leo. Let's see what game he picked. Hello, fans of TurboZone, and hello, fans of cheap Steam Deck games. Here is Baba Is You, a logic-based puzzle game, an indie title coming in at just under $20. I'm going to walk you through some of the mechanics in the tutorial levels, and you can determine whether or not this game is for you. So here we are in level 00, and you are playing as Baba, the titular character, that cute white rabbit there on the left. Now, what are these logic puzzles like? Well, take a look at this one here that I just shoved to the left. Baba is you is actually three separate tiles, but when these tiles are all together, they make a valid logical statement. So you in pink there is actually what controls or determines your character. If I separate it from Baba is, 
well, you have no character now, so the game just stops moving. Let me undo it. What about over here? Flag is win. Well, win is your winning condition. So as long as that is part of a statement, and then you find the object that you made is win, you can beat the level. And here's that flag. There we go. I won. Now let's go back into the same level and I can show you the fun of this game. What about these two on the bottom? Wall is stop. Well, that's giving this wall the stop property. So even though I'm pressing down, I'm not able to go through it. How about this one? Rock is push. These rocks in the middle, they have the push condition. I can move them around. Okay, now let's have some fun. What if I do this? I'm gonna take wall and I'm gonna shove it up here. <laughs> Sorry about the poor movement and playing on the camera. I'm actually gonna do wall is you. Now I told you, you is my character. So what happens when I do this? Look at that. My D-pad now controls the walls. And if I cross them into the flag, I win. So that is the fun with this game's logical statements. As long as you can dream it, and if you can make it happen in the level, then you can beat the world. Uh, you can beat these levels in many different ways. I will say though, part of the difficulty about two hours in comes from the fact that the levels are not made with that many solutions in mind. Sometimes there's only one solution and it can be really uh, hard to figure out. But a lot of these earlier levels, there's fun and there's beauty in getting creative. So what about this one here? Wall is stop. I can't go through the wall. And push that stop out of the way. And then you can see here, if I were to reassemble flag is win, then once again, I would have a winning condition on the flag. And as long as I touch that, I win the level. So that's it. Baba is you, logic-based puzzle game, a little more challenging, but I hope you enjoyed it and take a look at it. Yeah, take that, alien bugs. Oh, hey, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Really fun time making this one. I've been really enjoying the Steam Deck. I did a uh, video with Spencer at the beginning of the year where we talked about the Steam Deck and our thoughts. And, you know, it's, it's not a perfect device, but it's definitely a cool one that I've really enjoyed. I love being able to play basically anything on the go. It's very nice. So, uh, yeah, let, let me know what you thought of this episode of Five Cheap Games and what other consoles, series, genres, whatever it is you want to see covered here on Five Cheap Games. And really, you should play Helldivers, too. That game's pretty... This, this game's pretty fucking sick. You should... You should uh, it's awesome.